Okay, uh, hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar uh, introducing Magnolia CMS version 5.0 and why Magnolia 5 rocks for IT. Um, we're glad you could join us today. My name is Ben Price, I'm the Marketing Communications Manager here at Magnolia and I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what we'll be covering in this webinar um, together with a few housekeeping items. First of all, everyone is muted but uh, this doesn't mean that you can't ask questions. Uh, please feel free to submit them throughout the webinar using the uh, go to webinar control panel, which you see here. And we'll do our best to answer all of them during the Q&A session at the end of the webinar. Uh, one or two days after the webinar, we'll post the video recording online on our website and we'll email everybody as well, uh, along with uh, links to the slides and any further uh, reading material that there is. Um, after the webinar, you'll be able to also contact uh, myself or Philip, the presenter at any time. We'll give you contact details at the end of the webinar as well. If you want to uh, tweet about the webinar uh, during or afterwards, then uh, please feel free to um, to use our at or uh, uh, hashtag, which you see here on the screen. The webinar will last between 45 minutes and, and 60 minutes. Um, and we're going to explain, or Philip rather is going to explain the tools and technologies available in Magnolia 5 for building an integrated content management hub. Um, this webinar is a technical one. Um, not too technical, um, but uh, Philip will outline the key technical innovations in Magnolia 5 and demonstrate how to integrate and customize Magnolia 5 to develop your own digital presence. So um, with that, I will now hand over to uh, Philip Berfus, who will introduce himself and uh, present today's webinar. Thanks, Philip. Hello, I hope you can hear me. So it seems to work. Uh, welcome. So. The original title is Why Magnolia 5 Rocks for IT. Uh, yeah, it really rocks, but uh, when I try to explain that and find uh, analogies to explain the new features and aspects of Magnolia 5, uh, the first things which came into my mind were animals. So that's why I talk more about the zoo than the rock band. So. Then this makes me the zookeeper. I'm Philip Barfus um, for eight years here at Magnolia. I lead the product development and have uh, a bigger influence on many on the concepts for Magnolia 5. That's why I hope I can explain them well. So um, I think many have already seen Magnolia 5 and there are better videos than how I can demo it, but still I quickly want to show you uh, Magnolia 5. I log in. So here we have the app launcher where you have the apps. I maybe open the main app, which is to edit pages. I go to an article and start to edit it. That's how it looks like. If I edit it, I get the dialogue. So the main cue here in this user interface is first that you have these apps with tabs. So it's very nice to work with. And the three Trinity icons. So I will talk a lot about them. Here, this is the Pulse, which is currently empty. That's the communication hub for messages, collaboration, and so on. And here are the favorites. And you see I have some because I will need them in my presentation. So that's where you can jump directly into some apps if you need to. So far, so good. I think that has to be enough for a short demo. So an entry to Magnolia. OK, I, you will see this kind of slides. The geek is my friend. Uh, and so when you see this slide, it's getting a bit more technical. I will show code snippets and so on, but you don't have to panic. Um, I mark them as such because I have also other slides, slides which are more conceptual. So please don't sleep too soon. <laughs> uh, here, that's another assistant, the fairy. I like her a bit more than the geek. Uh, so here, if you I have these slides and I will talk about the future ideas we have. So, you know, it's Magnolia 5. So this is the first version. We have made the basis, the platform. And I will also talk about things you can do with Magnolia 5. So talking about animals to sue. So I was thinking of hmm, which kind of animals I could use to explain Magnolia. So I found the elephant. 
the ants and very nice the flamingo. So how I will match them to the technical feature and aspects of Magnolia 5, we will find out in a second. So the elephant, well, he has a good memory, it's strong, it's a working animal. Here we have the ants, so it's about collective intelligence, so they solve complex tasks with very simple approaches, basic signals so they are not chatting talking too much also not arguing but um, in the end they are very efficient and that's how uh, Magnolia works also in the sense of collaboration and then here that's obviously about the new UI interaction framework so I cho have chosen an elegant beautiful animal um, it has a perfect tool it can filter the water it's actually a strong flyer, didn't know that. I <laughs> quickly did some research. It's a very reliable animal, so they will always go as partners. So, and it's also everywhere. So it's not just uh, an animal which is someplace, but it can be used, or actually not, <laughs> the flamingo cannot be used, but seen uh, on all the continents. So here, these are the three animals. So now let's get technical. So the web content management, that's the basis, the fundament. So here we talk about content management content and in Magnolia 5 we use for these uh, content apps, content apps for managing pages, contacts, products, whatever. Um, there are the obvious features for a web content management system which uh, we already had and which are still part of Magnolia 5. It's also about the publishing and so on. So I will talk about this topic and use this animal. A content management system today is not much if there is no way to collaborate because you have to talk about the things you're doing, the content you enter, you have to maybe you have some restrictions, review processes, but maybe also some processes which are um, less restrict but you just want to inform someone like um, that he should maybe think about translating it or you have an idea and you want to comment and we also integrate a new workflow engine so that's the collaboration aspect of it. The bigger part of the work if you want went to actually into the flamingo part, flamingo part so here that's a UX user experience framework, the UI framework, which you can use to build your own apps or integrate your things or which we are using now to build our new features. It brings apps, it brings for instance forms or favorites, uh, I would also consider be part of this framework. So now all these three aspects, the content management collaboration and the new UI framework, um, how are they used in the in this term online digital channel management. So this is Magnolia, the center, the hub, and so you have many channels coming in. So uh, either these are authors, you get imports, uh, or maybe you um, monitor other systems and you or users with a mobile go and take pictures on the way or enter data. And then we ship on different channel, web, mobile. Uh, you could also do some uh, Twitter announcements and so on. There is another aspect um, which is here. There are other big systems in your company and Magnolia doesn't try to solve everything. It tries to solve something very well and gives you uh, the ability to integrate other things and so you will have your other system and you will integrate that in Magnolia and that's why we're focusing, focusing so much that uh, Magnolia is extendable. Here are some explanation of the diagram above. So first let's talk now about the content management system, the basic. Here, that's what you have already seen, that's a content app. The good thing about content apps is you can easily create them 
just by configuration. You don't have to program to make such an app. I will demo it later. So in a content app, you have always uh, the browser view, like here in the tree, that's an example of the pages app. You have on the right hand, hand side uh, the actions you can do, perform on an item. You have a listed view, sometimes a thumbnail view. And if you start to edit, you see here um, the form to edit such an item. I will demo it a bit later when I will actually configure the contacts app. Here you can just configure the node types you want to manage, say which actions to use. You can say if you want to have a tree, a list, which columns, you can add other views, you can define the form. So the good thing here, I think the important information here is also, it's not only about the configuration in Magnolia, but you can also have uh, create these definitions uh, about how to build the app in the code or by other ways. So here you see the geek. So he is now going to add a field to an existing app. Before we do that, we quickly go here. That's a very, very basic content app, which is uh, also shipped with Magnolia. So that's the good example where you should start. So for instance, if I double click on Marilyn Monroe, then I open here my editor to edit this information. I can also open more than one. So, and work with them. Now the task here is very, very simple. I also want to manage the nickname. So I go here and I will use for the first time my favorites. So I have a link for the form fields of my contacts so that I jump directly into the configuration app and it opens in the right position. I use here the first name as the example. So I duplicated it. So I call it now nickname. And so that we know this is the nickname, we change the label. Uh, it's a text field, that's okay. I can have add here other implementations if I want. Yeah, so, and it will be on the first tab uh, about the personal information, that's okay. Now, if I also want to see it in the tree as a column, then I go and actually change the browser. So now I changed the editor, added the field, and I want to say in the browser, if you have a tree or list, the content view, then I want to have this column also shown so that you immediately know the nickname. Here I use the email for a duplication operation and quickly rename it, nickname. The property which is shown is nickname. Again, here you can have different uh, implementations for formatting. You can have calculated columns if you want. Obviously, also the label has to change. Good. That should be it. Wish me good luck. <laughs> so now we go to the contacts because it was already launched, the configuration needs to be loaded again. I quickly close it, open it. And you see, I have the column nickname, no data yet. And I go and open Sebastian. So it's actually required, I should have configured it otherwise, but so that's the SAP, save changes. And you see, I have my nickname here in this column. So, yeah, so that's the content apps. I think you got the, the basic idea. You can create your own with this configuration. You can copy configuration and base on, on this. Let's go back here. Uh, so it's, we are still the elephant. We are about the web content management, so 
what you want to manage in such a system are images that we have a new dam. It's a, a fundament for many new features we will ship. So it has providers so that you can actually uh, use assets which are stored in a different system, like Flickr, file system, wherever. Uh, it can produce already now renditions, something else, different sizes, which you can use in new templates or in other out top output. And as before, it uses Dublin Core metadata. So we have also uh, an editor for different medias. In 5.0, we have just an editor for the images. And I will quickly show you now this, uh, how I crop an image to give you a certain impression on how this works. So for the first time, I go to the dam. And here. Uh, and let's go to the thumbnail view because it's nicer and we have it. I open this here. Right now something is slow. Hmm, okay, so that's the demo thing. I quickly try to restart or whatever. Quick my safari. I'm sorry this wasn't supposed to happen. So my server is still running. So I quickly restart it. I was running installation before, so that was a bright idea. And while it starts, I will just proceed with other slides. So here it goes. <laughs> yeah, now it would be the time to have a good joke ready. I don't have one, but I hope I have better slides than jokes. So the integration part is very important and that's not new, but I just want to mention it again. So you can use Blossom, which is a spring integration so that you can write your template and other things in spring and we will definitely ship that also together then with 5.1 so that you can do your integration part so that you can get your other systems in and that you can code the way you are used to code if you are a spring developer. What will come next and what can you do is we will have more content pools like articles, news events, similar to contacts with uh, where you manage them, where you tag them, categorize, uh, categorize them, and you will use them then in your pages with a more agile way. So it ag aggregates the lists of latest news or latest articles and so on. We'll definitely add uh, better support for the video and we'll start to write some of the first providers for the dam and we'll also then um, use other publishing channels. The thing here is it's extendable. Uh, you can also start to work on some of these topics and maybe you need it for your project. So maybe just try it. I think uh, it's, it's not too hard or also contact us if you have some ideas. So here we talk about the collaboration and processes. We have the workflow, a new workflow integration and the pulse which is there for the collaboration. So what's the pulse? We have seen this message screen. Apps can send messages to the pulse. Workflow for instance will send work items to the pulse so that you know okay I need to do a review but also other tasks, other kind of code can send messages to the pulse, schedulers, importers, maybe something goes wrong 
and you want to inform the uh, system administrator. The pulse can then also send emails or actually from the pulse you jump again back to tasks. If you are a user, you go to the pulse and then you see, oh, I have to translate a page. Then you click on the location and you jump again in the right app to translate your page. So these are task oriented apps then. So now I really hope the Magnolia is up and running again so that I can show you first the cropping and then how to communicate with messages. That's a normal problem here. It's not yet time for panic mode. <laughs> so here, uh, don't challenge it. I just take the logo. That's what I used in the rehearsal. So here, if I go and this is the editor, so I can rotate and flip. And for instance, I can also use cropping here to say I want just this part. So I crop the image, maybe I rotate it, I save the changes, and here we are back. So and you also see in the preview, everything, everywhere it's immediately updated. So also if you reverence that uh, image in pages, it will be immediately updated. More of this kind of editors will be shipped in future versions, also for video, so that you can select the still with, uh, image and so on. Good, so much for the dam. We are actually talking about the pulse, if you remember, and if I remember, so the pulse here empty. I quickly show you how to send a message with a dev tool, which is to test and to work with the pulse. I just say hello to me. Hello. How great is that? I send it to myself and I send it as a warning just because I like yellow. <laughs> so here you will see this is how you will get the messages. You can then go in here and react on it. I here simply delete it. So I will later show you a better use case uh, where we do uh, have a translation request here. That's just about the basic thing. So you can get send messages on different levels, info, warning, error. And what's also interesting, you can send them to specific user broadcast or user groups. So for instance, you have an author group and you want to inform them that you will publish everything in one hour and that they should behave. Good. So what is one of the highlights of this uh, system here is that you can not only send messages, so but you can also send a message and say which message view it should use and you can customize this view and you can also define which actions are available on such a screen. For instance, for the review workflow, you would have a reject or a proceed action, or for maybe also an action to show the diff view if you want to see it. And the good thing here, this is again, similarly configured as for the, we have seen it for the form, and the very same uh, techniques uh, that makes it very easy to define your own processes. So it's not only about what Magnolia ships as processes. So it's really if you need other things like a product, if you have a product there, and if you need to verify that the prices are okay, or so you can also have this kind of processes implemented. Here it comes the collaboration example. I will use this in more than one step. Let's just for once open Eclipse. <laughs> Um, here you see it's a normal Magnolia module for those who know it. It will install 
uh, some configuration and it has a bit of code to do implement these actions. But this module will also ship is an example app which I will also show later. What does it do? So our pages app is a content app as you might now know and if I open for instance an article or maybe let's use the favorites so that it directly opens this article. And you also see if the cropping and of, uh, of the image worked. So <laughs> our logo is now funny. Uh, we have in this module has installed now an action to the pages app so that I can request a translation. I do that. Um, is this really correct? Ben worked on it. Verify. Okay. So now I go and log out because I'm I'm the super user. And now if I go as Eric, uh, I ask them to change the example in the last minute, I remember. So you get your message in there, which is a translation request with all the comment you have sent and what the user which needs to do the translation now can do is actually I quickly show that now I will explain how it works later is actually can say start translation and it jumps into this page so one user can go to a page say this needs translation it goes to the group of translators they get that in the inbox they navigate to it uh, without needing to know where this page really is I will show the implementation details maybe later now let's go back uh, we will also make the, the code example available so if you are really interested what we also add in Magnolia 5 is a new workflow engine we have chosen JBPM it's well known uh, that's good it has because of that also visual tools available so for instance there is a workflow editor in Eclipse and from in this workflow you can execute the Magnolia commands for publication, versioning and also send messages to the pulse that's what you will do if you need user interaction and as I've said you can define the message screen for the human task so that you have your information and the actions so you can do a lot with this I'm sure we will also do a lot with this, uh, so you can send notification, you can start to have uh, watch lists, so for instance you register for a page, if it changes you get the notification. Uh, we will have more task oriented apps, for instance now for the translation, so that we don't have to spoil the pages app with all the translation features. We can now have an app which is just for the translation and have, has just the features to translate the content in there. We think about different notification channels than just in Magnolia and so on. And also that's long on the wish list is a workflow designer. Currently you have to use Eclipse to design your workflow. So these are some of the ideas, things we can do in the future or things you can do in the future. So we have talked about the basic content management. We have talked about uh, communication, the pulse. And now we talk about the user experience framework, that's a user experience platform if you want. So it brings the UI and our patterns together and you can use them. So you don't need to think like how should the user navigate, how should I build the, the menu for certain actions, how should I build the tree so, and, 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 and. So all the things are ready made provides different features here. These three are just examples. That's a technical 
overview about how it works. It, uh, you see in the center the Vardin, um, which talks to the Google Web Toolkit side of Vardin, which is in your client. So actually what you do is you don't need to code on the client side in your web browser, you just work on the server side and that's very nice because you can access the uh, content repository, you can access the content model or use reflection or these kind of techniques where which you could never use on a client side without uh, implementing a lot of web services. This diagram here is showing a similar thing. So point one is actually Magnolia, Vartin and Google Web Toolkit, even if it is on the client side, uh, all these three frameworks use Java as a coding. So that allows uh, uh, a skilled Java developer to do everything. So you don't need a armada of developers of different skills. So you need a Java developer and you can do your things. Even if you want to work on the client side. Vardin is the base framework and Vardin uses Google Web Toolkit to do the client side coding. Here is, uh, you have many widget sets from Vardin which you can uh, use to build your apps. So also you, you don't have to think about creating buttons, progress bars and, 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 so you just use them, Vardin provides them. It's a rich framework, uh, it's very close to swing coding, it's Java based, you can test it with JUnit tests because it's Java it's very well documented, I have to say, and it's Apache licensed. So we tried other approaches before we have chosen Wadin and they weren't so successful. Then someone in the team uh, proposed to use Wadin and so they were very soon very familiar with it and very productive. So I think that's also what will happen actually in other companies or in partner companies which use Magnolia. And they also don't have to learn a uh, weird Magnolia something. So it's really this Vardin widgets which are documented. You have to learn the UI API of Magnolia. So these are the layers. If you start to develop with Magnolia 5, you will first look at one chart. That's the UI API, which defines the most important interfaces. We provide then widgets for the form, for the rich text editor, uh, for the workbench, so for the for the tree browser. And then finally we have an implementation of the framework and on top of it sits the admin central. That's more for the understanding, but it's more relevant for you is this here. So there is admin central and based on this framework you write your apps. You don't have to care about starting, stopping. You don't have to care much about bookmarking. You just have to follow the Magnolia way of doing it. And I think probably in most of the projects, 80% of the apps you will build are not independent apps, but content apps to manage content. For there, there is a framework, so maybe you have to code something if you want to do something special, but you mainly configure it, and these are the content apps. I get always the question, but what is an app? And indeed, it's an interesting question, because if you talk about it, it first sounds to be huge, but actually, technically, it's uh, I always say it's just a UI extension, it's an extension point. You should make the apps task oriented and to build your views in your UI, you will use Vardin to build the views for the backend code for the presenter there, you will use then Magnolia and Java and sub apps, it's also a term which I sometimes use Sub apps are actually the tabs which open if in an app. So if you open a certain contact and there is this tab, these are the sub apps. That's just to prove that we also thought something when we built it. 
uh, you can take, uh, if you are interested, you can look at this slide later on. So we have seen the basic collaboration with the translation example. Here it's the time zone app. It's a very simple app, which also the module which I've uh, shown you uh, is installing. I think they added it here to the time zone, so here. So this was written in one hour. So that's, they used the calendar of Wadin. So, and the two, the application here is that you can select uh, a certain time zone and you can change the, the time and simply get uh, the current time in all these locations. It's a very basic example, but it shows that you can do anything in these apps. So in the app, it's not about JCR content, it's the content apps which are about the JCR content. You can also integrate <laughs> things uh, on, in a very simple way. So we have also some legacy code and we didn't want to, for instance, convert that. So we have, for instance, uh, the Groovy console here that also integrates that just uses here now an iframe in an app. So there is uh, a legacy app you can use to do this kind of integrations. For instance, if you want to integrate a calendar, a Google calendar or something like that. If we quickly look at the such a basic app, so here that's the main sub app which actually starts, so we have the principle that we always have a view and a presenter, so it just hooks the things together. You see uh, with IOC you can get uh, whatever you need, the sub-app context or the event bus for the communication. If you go to such a view implementation like here, then you see it's really very much like swing coding. So you have a layout, you add the components you want to use, if there is an uh, action, so you can add a, a listener. So here it listens when it's added so that it can immediately use the current time probably. And here that's if you click on the convert button so that it will update the fields and all the listener to that field will know it. So this here is now just using wilding. Nothing special. Uh, Magnolia code. The only thing which is now specific to the Magnolia framework is actually the app and the handling of the app. So you can have a, you have a start operation and it uh, tells you where the user wants to open your location if there was a bookmark or something like that. So let's close this groovy app. So that was just one example to show you what, what the basic app is. The favorites I find very interesting, well they are handy, but um, useful, but the clue there is that Magnolia has the, this concept of locations, the UI, where you can say go to that app, to that sub app with these parameters, and that's actually what we are using for this navigation. So for instance, if I, if you remember, there was this message here, which I got for the translation. And if I go here now, start translation, it jumps to this app, to this specific page. This for instance is a location change. If I go here, if I say, uh, the action in ages. So if I want to see how we have added the action in our pages, then you see this is where it is. Yeah, so that was, I already showed you that example. Might be interesting to show you now two code snippets for these actions. So here there is the action to request a translation. So here they were 
building the text area for the comment and they were then opening this confirmation dialog in the sub app context. So if I switch to another app, I'm not block, uh, to another app, I'm not blocked. If on success, then I will do the, the confirmation. And here, execute after confirmation. Here you see you built, uh, they built the message and then finally send it to the main system. Here it's a send user message to the super user before it was actually sent a group message to the editor group. That's why I went to Eric, <laughs> but uh, we thought it's simpler for the demo. I just forgot. The in the message view, when we were jumping back to the applications, this code is as simple as getting from the message the location which was stored and going to the location controller and saying, hey, jump to this location and the user, the other user, will end up where I was when I requested the translation. In general, we have this principle of going from a definition by a factory to the UI widget tree. The reason here is uh, you can use this definition to also build other UIs. So on a smartphone, we will have a different kind of factory. If it is a right to left UI, it will also be in some of the cases a different factory. Interesting thing is you can also replace these factories or implementation. So for instance, if you don't like the rich text editor, you can say this definition for a rich text editor maps to a different implementation. This is not only used for forms, that's an example. It's a principle which is used in many places. And I repeat it, it's, for me it's very important. The definition is not only produced in this configuration tree. This definition can also be produced by code so that you can directly code a form uh, if you don't want to maintain the configuration or we have all the such uh, scenarios where we produce a definition dynamically. For instance, it needs uh, for each of the registered workspaces in the repository a certain element. So we loop and add these elements to the definition, go to the form builder and say, hey, now build the form for this. It's actually used in the security app. You have seen already a bit uh, these notifications. Um, they are a call on the app context. You can get the app context injected. And one of the biggest improvement that's since 4.5 is that we support now IOC dependency injection. That means you can replace most of the things you see. For instance, if you are not happy with this browser here, if you are not happy with the action bar, I think you, well, you shouldn't change this, but it may, it, it means that you can say, okay, it, that works for my case, like for the configuration, I want everything with the search, but then in here, I want the Flickr integration or something else. So you can go and say, okay, I have this app definition, and in this place, I want to have a different view class. I'm not going to demonstrate that, it's more, about giving you a hint so that you first learn about the power behind uh, Magnolia 5 and so that you can use it and then you can do your own researches. Actions are used in many, many places. So that's one interface. You have also seen the action for the message view. You have seen the action when I add something for the pages. If you do a dialog which does something special on save, that's also an action. So the action is the UI part. There is a on the uh, equivalent on the server side, if you want, backend the command, which is then executed from the workflow. So a typical command is, for instance, activation, publication, versioning. Here uh, a bit more in details, that's the action bar. You have, I think I have already shown you how to add an action. And 
they are also sensitive, so based on the context. So I just quickly demonstrate that you can implement your own availability or configure them in a way that so you see the actions change based on what I select here. Uh, you can also make this availability based on no types or what we have out of the box that you can say you need a certain role to have a action. Ideally we would now say request translation are just for the authors but not for the publishers or I don't know. Yeah, I already gave you the code samples. The forms is we the forms if I talk about the form then I talk about like here in the contacts. Here that's a form. If I edit a page a component then it opens actually a dialog, but in the dialog, the fields here is also a form. So we try to reuse all these elements as good as possible. The also means that you need to learn one thing and the message view is actually also containing a form. So you configure it again the very same way. And what's also interesting, the forms can edit, it's called a Vardin item. So that's a interface, a neutral interface from Vardin. So that means with such a dialogue, you can edit a in-memory object, a row in a database, or in our case, we normally edit a node in the JCR repository. If you combine that, you can use these actions and the forms to edit anything. So you can actually also, let's say if you have a database and you want this integrated in Magnolia, you make a Vardin container and a Vardin item which maps to this and you can use it to list it or to edit it with our forms and it will just look like all the other apps. It's a form in an app, a form in a dialogue just to show two use cases of it. Validation, is there error handling warnings? So right to left is something we definitely want to do. Maybe we also add a mini administration interface for the smartphones. Uh, the form editor, you have seen these definitions currently, you configure them in this tree. Now it's the time with this UI uh, and with having this concept of the definitions that we can also build editors. So the next step is now to build a nice form editor. So you go there and say add text field and you have the, the properties which you can edit uh, and, and, and fill in and so on. You can also, because it's using IOC and so on, you can also start to build your own extensions to this UI, have different views if you need them. So we are very interested in seeing what people actually, actually start to do with Magnolia 5. And also if you have obstacles maybe, so we are also building our, our first apps and see then, oh, here I need three lines, it should be one line. Uh, then we are also interested in this kind of feedback. So now it's the time we have 5.0, we're building 5.1, 5.2 and try to improve the API where it's really needed so that um, it's easy to build your extensions. Okay, so <laughs> that was a long journey. Uh, Magnolia is more than a zoo. I just use these animals so it has the good, great content management features. It brings now these collaboration features you can use in your projects, in your custom implementation. And it has this UI framework which gives us now the option to go quickly and add features, implement ideas. Before it was always like, mm, should we really do it? Oh, it's so costly. Now we see, oh yeah, okay, if we can quickly do it, we have a Vartin add-on which can already add quickly tags and so on. So it lets us and you move 
forward. Here is a bit the idea of how we proceed. Well, not a bit, that's the idea how we proceed. We have ship 5.0. It, for us it was important to ship. So we have the platform, we have the basis. Now we try to get this basis complete, smooth, make the user interaction smoother. There are things which are not yet perfect. For instance, if you have a page and edit the image component there, you have to go to the dam to upload a new image. And we want that the user can directly upload the image, these kind of things that uh, sending messages to group, um, making first translations of the UI and so on. So it's about making it more and more complete so that we have what we expected to have with Magnolia 5. So first comes the Enterprise Edition 5.1 before the conference. So at the conference we will have a better Magnolia 5. On the 15th of November, that's a special date because it's the 10th anniversary of Magnolia, the product. And then we are ready and we will attack more and more features. Talking about personalization, for instance, web experience management and so on. But there are many, many topics. And also improvements in the sense of the UI configuration so that it's easy to, make, to configure uh, forms and apps and so on. If this wasn't technical enough, or anyway, please visit our conference. At the conference, we will talk a lot about Magnolia 5, also about other interesting projects. We will also have uh, workshops where you can learn how to write apps. People will be available. You can talk, you can make proposals if you think something needs improvement. And if you want to get uh, your 20% discount on the ticket, you can use this promotion code here. And for the registration, which you should do just now, uh, you go to this URL here. I think it's very important now to, we have, we have done it, we have shipped it, we have the basis, now we have to make it, comp uh, to complete it. We need also feedback and I think we will have in two, three months, we will have a, a huge acceleration in all this and see a lot of features and apps built. So, finally, we have questions and some answers. <laughs> uh, I think now it's time to again, again to hand over to the moderator. So thank you for listening. Or, well, it's not yet thank you, but thank you for the questions. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay, yeah, thanks, uh, Philip. That was a, a great presentation. Um, yeah, we do have questions, so um, we have five or so minutes to, uh, to try and get through as many as possible. So if you do have questions, please uh, submit them now. So we'll get started here. First question um, about the image editor. Um, as far as editing images is concerned, um, is the new Magnolia as sophisticated as something like Photoshop? No, no, it's it's not, I think, even the idea to have a Photoshop online uh, in the content management system. If you need a professional tool, if you also need a professional graphic designer which know how to use these tools, then uh, I think you should still do that externally. It's about the basic operations uh, author should be able to do like cropping, so it, the image is used in a different situation where it has a different uh, enforced ratio and now it just cuts off the heads and so you want to avoid that. So it, it's more for this kind of use cases. Uh, the same goes then also for the videos, so it's not a, uh, really a cutting system or whatever, but you can set the start end point and choose a still image. This kind of editors I see in there. Okay, next question. Okay, sure. So, next question. Uh, well, first of all, great, uh, great presentation. Thanks, Philip. Will the presentation be recorded and emailed in the next few days? Uh, yes, it will. Uh, I can answer that one. The, uh, the recording of the, the video and the audio will be sent around, uh, a link to the slides, 
and some other useful links as well. So that's all coming to email to everybody. Um, next question is uh, with the Pulse also work to make a, a request or open a ticket to a ticket system like Jira. Yes, it could work. The, the thing is you send a message to the Pulse and if you then have, a, for instance, a user in Magnolia with, uh, and an action to say create ticket, then you could have such an action and this action is Java and you can do everything. Uh, we will also have for email notifications so on listeners on these messages so that you can plug in uh, a listener which sends messages to to other places. Um, now for this particular use case it would probably be more a specific message view where you confirm that you want to create the ticket and use the content of the of the message the user sent. But uh, yes, I think it can be used for many, many uh, such use cases and Jira is a potential one. Yeah. Support request, so you have an author and he wants to make a, a support request, so you can provide in the page editor an action support request and it goes to Jira. Then it wouldn't go via Pulse, but directly go to Jira. I hope that answers the question. Okay, thank you. Next one uh, regarding workflow. Mm, can I use Activity as a workflow engine as well? Well, there is a theoretical answer, which is yes. Uh, practically, the thing is the workflow, uh, the new workflow module defines a neutral API. So it means it should be you can integrate other workflows. Um, how well that will will work in, in the real world, I cannot say. So we have definitely not verified that this uh, works for other workflow engines like Activity. We currently focus on having the one for JBPM. But uh, the interaction with Magnolia has an API and if this is possible to uh, fulfill this API then you can also use something like activity. We were also, uh, we needed to set, decide between activity and JBPM. Finally we then went for JBPM yeah, because it's very well known and Okay, thank you. Next question here. Um, what kind of follow-up help centers will be uh, will Magnolia be providing? Um, will there be a fully fledged instruction manual be made available? Um, maybe I can if you can still see my screen uh, is Ben nothing. You can see the screen. Good. Uh, maybe I go to the documentation. There's uh, this Magnolia documentation here for Magnolia 5. Uh, we are doing more, adding more and more content here. So, but it already has a lot about developing apps, uh, about um, how to program an app. All the things I was talking about, about location changes and so on, is explained here in details. Here you have, for instance, uh, just an example how to change a view with uh, IOC. So the basic framework is very well documented, so I think. And obviously, if we build something new like Magnolia 5, we also have to explain it. So this webinar here is a start. We will have more material and we have also some good ideas how we can uh, make this kind of uh, videos and webinars available to everybody so that people can get chunks of in instructions for certain topics. I need to make a collaboration process, what do I need? But for the moment today, I advise you to go to this documentation. I advise you to look at the uh, Magnolia UI API, Java doc, there are the most important interfaces and 
the next level, I think, go to some basic app, maybe look at this demo code uh, we made for this web webinar and learn from it, and then I think you will get quickly somewhere. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Philip. I think it's also worth mentioning that, um, as you mentioned before, the Magnolia Conference is also going to be a big um, support help for uh, regarding Magnolia 5. There is also planned training for Magnolia 5 scheduled for this year. There is a four-day course here in Basel scheduled for August, uh, starting August the 19th. Um, there will also be a formal two-day training course um, during the conference itself, or rather just before the conference, the two days before. Um, so if you visit the, uh, the Magnolia conference site uh, or contact, um, contact us regarding training, then there's also support, of course, available in that form as well. Um, okay, so next question. Um, I realize we're going a little bit over time now, but I still see there are quite a lot of people online, so we'll, we'll continue through the questions. Um, here we have a question. Any plans to include advanced search in the 5.1 release? Uh, I'd like to see a global search available in the app launcher. Uh, what search? The... Uh, any plans to include advanced search in the 5.1 release? What we definitely plan is to improve the search uh, so that you can um, have a grouping on types. Um, and yeah, otherwise there is no specific plan, but maybe if um, I think uh, Ben provides uh, then contact, so if the questioner can catch up. Yeah. Okay, um, here we have one. You mentioned personalization and A-B testing earlier. Um, are these features currently in development? Uh, it's, they are in concepting, so we are uh, starting to make the, the mock-ups. Uh, there were some proof of concepts uh, with with 4.5 in some of the projects. We try to learn from from there, um, and it's I cannot guarantee this now here. But uh, what I can say is we plan to do that for 4.3, which is coming spring um, 14. Then yeah, so it's definitely one of the next next feature. What exactly it means. Um, I cannot tell yet, but we'll definitely introduce these hooks to that uh, that logic and rules can decide on what kind of content is shown. But I think now with this first step with the content apps, the independent managing of content, uh, this is the first step also to do this additional um, content processing and having more dynamic pages rather than really fixedly, uh, fixed structured in tree and yeah. okay uh, would it be possible to add icons for the open apps in the Trinity bar the well there is an official answer you should not add anything to these Trinity icons if you know how Magnolia works, uh, we cannot prevent you from doing that. So, <laughs> but this is, it's a bit special um, for these three icons. This is a special, um, we call this shell, shell apps. And compared to the other apps, it's a bit a different API. So we also ourselves are trying not to do too much in there. So that's also why we want to have, like here in the pulse, if you have the translation workflow, so that you really jump to the app, which is for the task. So I think the apps is where you should add your custom um, things. And I would not confuse people with more icons at the top, but technically it's doable. Okay, thanks. Another question here. <clears throat> is it possible to configure actions to the editor bars in the page editor? For example, the delete action, which is currently not implemented. Uh, yeah. So the, if, I, if I'm back here, for instance, we have now added this here. I quickly jump to this configuration action in page. 
so you can actually go and delete for instance if you want to do something else on the if you delete the area if you want for instance to do some additional versioning or if you think you don't want the confirmation dialog then you can actually go and change these actions here so these are the definitions about the layout so you see here that's the action bar and in there you can define the different sections with also the rules when to show uh, which kind of sections. This here is a bit complex because the Pages app is not that simple. Uh, the configuration looks simpler in other apps, but still all the pages, the DAM, contacts, they use the same framework, they use the same configuration. So once you learned how to add or change an action, you can do it everywhere. So you can have a module which installs or replaces a certain action in the page editor. The same thing as we have done now in our example to do this translation request. Okay, and it would be nice if uh, if you could request a translation directly on a component rather than the, the whole page as you showed before. Is that possible? Yes. Um, well, this request for translation is not the Magnolia feature, so this is just a demo example here. But if you want to do that, uh, you can go here and say this translation request is also available if a component is selected. So you see there are different actions on the page. So here it's now page level action. But you can go and register it for components. And if you want, you can also have a different implementation or actually the action gets the current content. So you can say, oh, if it's a component, I, I uh, send the location change to the page. And yeah, so many things are possible. So it's open source. You can look at it. You can improve it, change it. Okay. Um, question, does Blossom work in the current version or is this only planned for 5.1? It's planned for 5.1. Um, uh, we are not far. So 4.5 has, in the sense of uh, templating, it's the same as 5.0. Blossom works on 4.5. We have this new feature in, in Magnolia 5 which we have not yet shipped, which is this configuration by code. And so the same way of doing a builder-based configuration will be used by Blossom. That's why it needs to come together with Magnolia 5.1. So if you configure your forms then in the, or your app with uh, three lines of code in your module descriptor, or if you use Blossom to configure, then the forms or the component edit dialogues and so on. That will be the very same thing. So Blossom comes from Magnolia to the Magnolia version closer to the main system, actually, yeah. Okay, and if I have built a site without STK in 4.5, can the same templates and configurations be used in, in version five or do I have to change them? Uh, the templates and so on, then can, they can be used, so it's the same. Uh, what the dialogue configuration um, needs to be transformed, but there is an update task which can do it. So there is no magic, it's just like the if it was before a configuration of a tab and the text field, it has now a, a form node, tabs, and then the tab node, and it needs to change the class name and we have an update task which can do this processing. So if there are basic templates, uh, or basic any template, so the template language has not changed, I repeat that, uh, we have just improved the editor so that the selection model is better, but it has not changed how the pages are processed or how the templating work and templating language works. But the configuration of the dialogues, the forms, has a new format so that it is more flexible and more reusable, but there is an update task which can do this transformation. So we have not uh, transformed the dialogues for the SDK uh, by hand, so we also use that task. Okay, there's a suggestion here. Maybe still a remark. 
uh, for us it's the goal to have the, the migration path from the 4 series to the 5 series uh, that's um, scheduled for 5.2 so you can start new project with 5.0 and you can use uh, the, uh, if you just have the templates or things which you have to take over then it's also easy uh, Otherwise, I think uh, you should not now go and immediately migrate four projects to five. We will there improve the tooling. But I think um, it's good for new projects. It's good to, to see how it works. And yes, if you write a temp template in four or five, the template looks the same in 5.0. OK, thanks, Philip. Um, there, we have a suggestion here um, to improve the DAM. I think the ability to drag and drop files from the desktop to tree view would be very useful and allow for bulk upload that is natural for publishers. Yes, exactly. So maybe I can, um, I'm not sure if I should do that, but I just do it. Um, um, so for instance here, that's, that's for the community feature here, that's a, a matrix about things we do for 5.1, 5.2 with uh, priorities. And so for instance, um, uploading imaging, make it, making uploading of images easier is here. Uh, also having bulk operations so that you can delete multiple files. And I think the, the, the one user was probably talking about the zip upload of the old DMS. So these things will, will definitely also uh, again ship because it's requested from, from several uh, persons. Now. And that's also good to get feedback for us. So we see oh, there are things currently maybe missing. And if we see, oh, this is, uh, we can help the people a lot by implementing this, we will push it. And we will have 5.1 before the conference. And so some of these, uh, the biggest complaint, we will definitely remove for 5.1. Good. OK, next. Um, are there any plans to make authoring uh, environment clusterable? Ah, uh, yeah, so I need time to understand the question. Yes, sure. Um, yes, so we have removed some of the obstacles now. Uh, we are preparing the ground for this. We um, There are some challenging parts we also try to fix now. For instance, if you have multiple author environments, uh, you cannot have uh, multiple workflow engines. So that's also why we construct now the workflow in a way that there can be a single instance responsible for doing processing the workflow and we have also removed the system wide locking if that rings a bell for some so we are preparing the ground for the author clustering it's we also hope that magnolia with now this collaboration thing is more and more suited for for an intranet application so we will have more authors on a system than we had before when you were mainly managing the content of the website. And so that's one of the key points there is author clustering. And yeah, we will manage that soon. I'm, I'm quite sure, yeah. OK, next question uh, about Eclipse. Um, Eclipse, the uh, IDE, uh, indicates that Magnolia solutions are heavily code-based and requires coding to customize features. I'm not sure if I got the question right. If it needs coding to customize Magnolia, um, yes. I think you can do a lot with configuration, um, but some Java background uh, is needed. Um, uh, if this answers the question, yeah. It, it doesn't mean that you need to code a lot. And if you do, uh, if you make templates, you can make a form with the fields. And in your template, you have a templating language, which is very simple, so which you can learn in in one hour. So you don't need Java, but 
if you have then the bigger use cases with integration, if you want to have custom actions, custom processes, then very soon you want to write your own action, even if it's for one line of code. We will have more and more actions, uh, like, like for instance, these translation requests, also available that you can do it just by configuration, that you don't have to implement these basic actions, but still, um, in the end, it's a Java uh, backend platform product. Yep. Okay, and another uh, Eclipse-related question. Um, is there a simple instruction on how to get Magnolia 5 running in Eclipse and how to add modules also in Eclipse? Um, I think so. It had well, um, yeah. Maybe we can answer these kind of questions then in the forum. Uh, there are pages which talk about how to use Magnolia in Eclipse. As I said, we also have plans to have, a, in addition to documentation, more uh, more things to help users to, to make the first steps, um, so, yeah, but on the other hand, there is nothing special about Magnolia in that sense, so it's a, a Maven-based project, and it uses the start standard tooling, but if there are problems, we are willing to help in the forum. And there are some wiki pages, I, I don't know by, by mine now. Okay, we have a question here relating to search and um, concerning search. I think a backend search was meant, okay, this was relating to a previous question, I think. Um, so find a page via a page title without having to browse the page tree. Same for images and videos and so on. Um, okay, well, there is currently no federated search. So that, that you could uh, have here an app which is using search, but we have in all content apps is uh, um, that here, that you have this search, so it's a basic search. There are already mock-ups and preparation then, and I think now I, I start to understand the question is, for instance, if you want to search pages for a certain activation status. So there will be here the filter, so that on each of the column you can define and say, I'm all, only searching in here. So here, that's now currently a global search. So advanced search is probably uh, meant to be more precise. Later, there can also be a search, which is a, a federated search on all content apps, but um, that's not the priority for 5.1. Yeah. Okay, there's another small feature request here. It would be nice to have page level annotation for better collaboration. Yeah, I think um, well, you can change all the, the dialogues for the pages. So there you can add your own annotations if you want. And I think what we will see soon is having a, a commenting system, like an author backend commenting system, because that makes now a lot of sense and is easy to implement. So similar to this translation request, you can say comment, you get your comment and you can go here into a comments view, which shows you then the comments to a certain page. Um, so this, um, maybe if you know it from the wiki, this wiki-like backend author commenting, that could now be implemented, that's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, another question here about the image editor. Um, can it be used to crop to a specific size, which is specified for different content types? so that users cannot mess with sizes or ratios? I, I understand the question, so it's about the fixed ratio. Um, yes, we, that's something we try to add in the future, so, but, but currently the, the cropping is happening here in the, in the admin uh, central. And so in here, so you don't have a context. 
So as soon you select such an image, it will be cropped to a certain uh, ratio in the template where you define this ratio, and it should then be possible, like in this template, uh, in this component dialog, as you can then also directly upload images there that it uses the correct ratio. So the the idea to have a fixed ratio action is possible. If you need it now for, for, a, for a particular reason, you can also extend this image editor. It also has this action configuration and you can change these actions. So you can have their action which is with a certain ratio. If you have to put just one, two in your project, you can add these ratios there. That's possible. If you have a, like a, another operation like that, you always want to gray out images, you can also add this operation there. Okay, thanks. Uh, question here, can uh, the Admin Central still be used with IE 7 and 8? It's not the focus. Uh, it works surprisingly well with IE 8, uh, but the focus is definitely on, on making it work perfectly on, on IE 9, uh, other browsers and then other devices. So it's not the to be honest, it's not on our priority list. It's different for the front end for the things we publish uh, in, uh, from the SDK, but the back end, uh, it's, um, it has a certain complexity and to support every browser is not so easy. Even if I have to say Vadin helps here a lot because many of the browser differences are covered. That's also why it's working surprisingly well um, in, in, in these browsers, but um, Okay, and the final question, um, thanks for bearing with us everyone. The final question is, when would the form module be reprogrammed? Um, were, there, were there several problems on this module? Um, and the code, uh, code base has various bugs in the current state? Yeah, it's the... It's, well, the mic, so that it works with five O. That's work in progress and it will work uh, with 5.1, so the uh, adding these fields and so on. But this is not a rewrite of this form module. And uh, for those who are listening here, please don't confuse them with the forms of the new UI. We are talking here about the form module, which is used in uh, on the front end in pages you publish where users do like a contact form, this form. Um, currently, there is no plan to do a big rewrite there. Um, what is planned for 5.1 is um, that we um, make it again complete in the sense uh, the same features as 4.5. But I agree, the, the form module as such um, is a module which at some point can will need a rewrite or a new concept. For the moment, we are focusing on just making it work again. Say so the same actually also goes for the SDK. There will be an SDK project to make a bigger step forward. Uh, now we are focused on 5.0, 5.1, 5.2, which is about making it smooth, making it complete. Uh, have bulk operation, undo, these kind of things which are currently still missing even if the new UI is very nice. There are things which you see that they are needed. Yeah. Okay, and there is now just one final, final question. This is the last one, I promise. Um, is or will there be a possibility to embed Vardin apps on pages? Vardin apps, uh, apps like Magnolia backend apps, uh, that might be a bit more complicated to use Vardin on front-end pages that's um, independent of Magnolia. So you can use Vardin to make your front-end um, apps, so that's working. To reuse our apps in the front-end, then I depends on the use case. You will probably more integrate or actually make then a um, uh, location change to the backend. So you can also, uh, even if, if such an app runs here in the Magnolia with the Trinity icon, um, we 
we also see use cases where the apps are running in a different context. So the API is neutral, so it needs an app context. If you provide one, you can start such an app. Uh, similar also to this uh, full screen mode. But it's all um, for the moment not the focus. I agree that having these, uh, if, if you have the forms, having a nice, neat way to use these Vardin forms also in the front end, that makes a lot of sense to make the content apps available on the front end. It will be doable. I cannot tell you now like what's the best approach. Okay. Good. Um, okay, well, that is the final answer to the final question. Thanks, everyone, who are uh, who still online. Um, we wanted to get through all the questions. That was uh, a, a much longer than expected webinar, but um, hopefully very valuable for everyone. Um, as we mentioned, the Magnolia Conference um, is going to be a big event for us, and we hope to see many of you there in uh, September. Just to go on our website and have a look for the Magnolia Conference, and please register and uh, We'll see you there. There will be lots of discussions about Magnolia 5, presentations and training, as we mentioned. And there's going to be another webinar, actually, um, on August the 22nd, which will be hosted by Magnolia's uh, CEO and CTO um, about Magnolia 5, an introduction uh, more for marketing departments and uh, business departments on the subject of digital channel management. So uh, perhaps you'll find that of interest as well, or your colleagues will. So just to remind you, we will send emails to everyone with all the uh, recorded material and further reading that we've mentioned today. Um, thanks again for joining and um, enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.